Okay, last we spoke, we were talking about fibroids. Most people think of uh, the uterus when they think of fibroids. But indeed, fibroids can affect any smooth tissue of the body. Typically, they affect the, the uterus. 40 to 80% of women are going to get fibroids, depending on age and race. Fibroids should be regarded as an estrogen issue. This is why they typically will appear in the uterus, which is a, an estrogen factory. There's also pre-diabetic involvement, insulin. So all this means if you want to reverse fibroids, use estrogen support and blood sugar support strategies. That means figure out the food thing. That's always the first thing. Figure out the food thing. Intolerances, food allergies, incompletely digested foods, incompletely digested proteins, bacteria in the gut, which we're going to be talking about here in a little bit. All of these can wreak havoc on the digestive system and can show up, manifest themselves. These digestive problems can manifest as fibroids. Focus on fat absorption. Whenever you have a hormone issue, a female hormone issue, or even a male hormone issue, and when we say hormone issue, we're typically talking about steroid hormones, which are fatty hormones. So if you have an estrogen problem, you've got PMS or fibroids or cysts or problems with your periods, you're not getting your periods, or if you're a man and you've got prostate problems or you have uh, uh, problems with your, you're losing your hair, testosterone issues, focus first on fat absorption. When we talk about di digestive health, Really, we're talking about, at least in large part, fat absorption, because fats are, are, are typically the hardest part of foods to absorb, and that means essential fatty acids, fatty foods, fatty vitamins, and also means minerals. Minerals like selenium and zinc are very important for the hormone system, especially for female hormones. Selenium is like a, a estrogen balancing mineral. Anybody, well, everybody should be on 200 to 400 micrograms of selenium, get on the ultimate selenium, but especially if you have a female hormone issue, if you're worried about breast cancer or any other female cancer, selenium is major medicine for protecting the body from estrogen. Dr. Wallach, it's one of the first things I noticed when I started listening to Dr. Wallach many years ago was how savvy he was, how hip he was to this very, very underappreciated mineral selenium. Really underappreciated, although more and more we're beginning to understand how vital this mineral is. But as far as hormones go, as far as female hormones go, 200 to 400, even up to 600 micrograms of the ultimate selenium are a must-have. Same with zinc. Zinc is also very, very important for hormone health. 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate a day is a good place to be. Many of us, there's a very important relationship between zinc and copper. And many of us, when we get uh, copper from copper pipes and from foods that contain copper, will show up, uh, will uh, will experience zinc imbalances because copper and zinc are related. The more copper you're getting, the more you're going to excrete zinc. And vice versa, the more zinc you're getting, the more likely you are to excrete copper. So if you're taking zinc, zinc picolinate, for your skin or for your health, for your brain health or for colds, or these are all things zinc is good for, for, the, uh, for acne, for hormone health. Make sure you're taking two to four milligrams of copper unless you know for a fact that you're getting copper from other sources. And also, if you have estrogen issues that show up as fibroids, balance out uh, your estrogen with, with progesterone and pregnenolone. You could use 2% progesterone cream, which is pretty easy to get, or I recommend that you get a 10% progesterone cream, which you have to have a pharmacist make for you. Of course, you can always get pregnenolone pretty readily in a health food store. 100 milligrams of pregnenolone is a good, a good place to be if you're interested in balancing out estrogen, pregnenolone, and progesterone for that matter, have nice relaxing effects and they can help you sleep and they can help balance out some of the anxiety and jitteriness that can be caused by problems with estrogen. The liver plays a major, major role in hormone health and digestive health and blood sugar health. In fact, we started off this whole discussion about fibroids talking about arginine and we're going to get back to talking about arginine because it's so important for the liver. It's important for detox. It's important for liver detox and arginine, as it turns out, is also important for the kidney kidney detox. And as far as fibroids go, you can pretty much assume that if you have fibroids, you got a liver health issue. You can pretty much assume, you know what? You can pretty much assume that if you're over the age of 50, that you have a liver health issue anyway. But especially if you're a woman dealing with fibroids, the chances are really good that you're, uh, you're experiencing some sort of liver dysfunction, fatty liver, etc. The fact that the liver is involved in the formation of fibroid tissue it should come as no surprise, considering th uh, that the liver processes both sugar and, and hormones. And we said that uh, although fibroids can affect any type of tissue, they typically will affect the uterus, which is like an estrogen factory, and it is the most common site of fibroid formation. And whenever cells are growing out of control, in addition to suspecting estrogen, you want to suspect blood sugar problems or insulin. So focus on the liver if you're dealing with fibroids. Bacteria in the gut play a very 
very important role in the processing of steroid hormones. And once again, if you have PMS, if you're not getting periods, if you have endometriosis, if you have fibroids or cysts or any female health issues, you want to focus on bacteria in the gut because of their link to steroid hormone synthesis. If you have any hormone health issue, whatever it is, focus on the microbiome. There's something else about this microbiome, the uh, population of bacteria in the gut that's important. So when it comes to brain health, we'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, our number on the bright side, we do have a couple lines open for you. Our number is 855-660-4261, 855-660-4261. If you're interested in getting on the mailing list for our YouTube videos, our skincare YouTube videos, send me an email, ben at ksco.com. We'll put you on the list. And if you're interested in joining our Sunday evening conversations, you can dial in 559-726-1300. This is every Sunday evening, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 7 p.m. Central Time. 559-726-1300, and the uh, access code is 455-987-POUND. Okay, so you got a hormone health issue, whether it's fibroids, PMS, endometriosis, focus on the microbiome. That is the fancy schmancy way of saying the universe of bacteria that live in the gut. Focus on this universe of bacteria in the small intestine. Get on the BioLumin Nightly Essence right away. Eat fermented food. Use the Beyond Organic Probiotic Dense Products. Use fatty vitamins, especially vitamins E and A, which have balancing effects for estrogen. Stay off of antibiotics and avoid tap water and soft drinks made with tap water, which have chlorine and fluoride and antibiotics that can kill or at least compromise gut bacteria. Stay away from problem foods, especially starches and sugars. Use the ultimate enzymes. Use apple cider vinegar after all meals. If this, if this, um, this kind of protocol sounds like something you've heard before in the bright side, you're right. You've heard it before. It's because working at this level should be the first thing we do for all all health challenges and there's no one whose health will not improve if they take this kind of approach this kind of digestive microbiome approach whether you're dealing with zits or arthritis or cancer or diabetes or autoimmune disease or fibroids or female health issues then there's this really fascinating link between gut bacteria and sepsis which is uh, medical talk for dirty blood there's a very interesting link between gut bacteria dirty blood endotoxins, that's poisons in the blood, and brain health. Gut bacteria and the uh, poisons they emanate or secrete into the blood and the health of the brain. In the last 30 or 40 years, we've become aware of a new health condition that's associated with intestinal problems, with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, with microbiome or gut bacteria issues. There's a very good chance that the increase in this health issue that has uh, gone up dramatically since I was in pharmacy school in the 1980s to today, for one out of uh, 15,000 or one out of 10,000 or so children had this disease in 1980. Today, one out of 68 have it. Night to 2000, one out of 150. Today, one out of 68. It's nearly doubled in the last 10 or 15 years. It's gone up 150 times in the last 30 years. And of course, I'm talking about a brain health issue that affects children. It's called autism. Most of you guys have heard of autism, and most autistic kids have digestive problems. Most schizophrenic kids have digestive problems. Most depressed patients, most any kind of brain health issue, most people dealing with any kind of brain health issue have some kind of digestive problems. I have worked with, in the last 30 years since I graduated pharmacy school, I've worked with countless autistic kids, and I don't recall even one Maybe out of the hundreds of kids I've worked with, I don't even recall one that didn't have a digestive issue. They've all had digestive issue, and it's been shown that in the, the population of gut bacteria in the digestive tract, when they do analysis on the gut bacteria of autistic children, they show that the gut bacteria of autistic children is significantly different than the population, the gut bacteria population of non-autistic children. It's very clear. There's a key relationship between the digestive health, between digestive health, digestive symptomology, and autism. Most kids, as I say, are going to have, most autistic kids are going to have some kind of digestive symptoms. And whether the cause of these digestive problems is food, specific foods, incompletely digested foods, or pesticides, some people think Roundup uh, may play a role in, in the breakdown of the digestive systems. Dr. Andrew Wakefield feels like vaccines may have a role to play in the breakdown of digestive health. It doesn't really matter 
matter what's causing the breakdown. What matters is that it's there. And if you got an autistic kid, or if you have a, a kid with schizophrenia, or a kid who's depressed, or if you are depressed, or you have brain fog issues, or you have any kind of mental health problems, focus on the gut. I know I'm saying it over and over and over again, but I can't help it. This is a health program, and my mission in life is to help you guys get healthy, restore the state of your biochemistry, the state of your body to its God-given, pristine state of health, and you have to focus on the gut. Autism is just another example of how digestive health issues show up in various guises. Friends, symptoms are not diseases. The signs of disease are different from the diseases. Autism is a symptom. Autism is a sign. Symptoms, no matter how they are, are how or what they are, no matter how they show up or what they are, symptoms are no more bodily physiological disease than rotting leaves or collapsing stems or a plant disease. Rotting leaves, collapsing stems, stunted growth, these are all signs of a plant disease. They are not the disease itself. Autism, fibroids, PMS, endometriosis, uh, cardiovascular issues, high blood pressure, these are all signs of a disease. They're symptoms, they're indicators, they're markers. This is the grand deception of medicine. It's this love your numbers misdirection. There's a commercial on TV now where they don't even tell you that they're gonna, their medication, their drug is gonna improve your health. It's for a new diabetes drug. They don't even have, you know, they're not even going out and telling you that their new diabetes drug, I forgot what it's called, is gonna improve your diabetes. They say it's gonna improve your numbers as if your numbers are the same as your health. You see what's happening here? This is called misdirection. Magicians use it all the time. Here, look over here, it's over here. You don't wanna look over there, it's over here where your numbers are, your cholesterol numbers, your blood pressure numbers. We're gonna fix all this. No, I don't worry about your disease. That's over there. Look over here, over here. It's called misdirection. Governments use it. Politicians use it. Scammers of all kinds use it. Legislators use it. Lawyers use it. And doctors and the medical model use it. And it's not fair because it rips us off and takes advantage of us. They focus on, uh, all, the medical model focuses on its attention on numbers because numbers can be changed. We can be billed for our numbers. This is why the medical model addresses the signs of disease as if they were a disease, because they can't do anything about the disease. They can do lots about the markers and the numbers, but they can't do anything about the disease. What makes this program different, folks, is we focus on the causes of disease much more than on symptomology. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for being here. Let's see. I'm going to continue talking about autism tomorrow. Uh, and then we'll uh, finish up talking about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and then we'll go into arginine. Uh, arginine is very important for all of these subjects. It's, it's your main detoxification amino acid. It's super amino acid in the sense that it's involved in all building and growth and repair, but it's also a very, very important detox amino acid, especially for kidney and liver issues. So if you've got any kind of health crises that are secondary or follow toxicity, and, and of course most health crises follow toxicity, you want to know about arginine and arginine arginine supplementation, especially because arginine is a little tricky to get from foods. you got to eat super high protein foods to get arginine. But supplementation with arginine is really easy. And if you're interested in anti-aging, bodybuilding, detoxification, that might be something to think about. I personally, as I've said, take five grams of arginine five or uh, four to six days a week. Uh, it's very easy to supplement with arginine. But we'll, t we'll continue talking about that tomorrow. We'll talk about autism as well. I'll tell you about an interesting relationship between female hormone and autism. How do you like that? As if there wasn't enough bad stuff associated with estrogen. Now it turns out that uh, the deficiencies in estrogen or imbalances in estrogen may actually have a connection with autism. In a way, autism is like a super, super masculine kind of health pathology. It's uh, the symptoms of autism, anger and frustration and and uh, inability to communicate, inability to relate. All of these are uh, kind of exaggerated testosterone or male hormone symptoms, symptoms of kind of an exaggerated male hormone response. And it turns out that uh, injecting estrogen into the brains of mice can actually help reduce 
autism symptoms. So we'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue our discussion on autism and, and brain health and liver health and, and digestive health, all as it regards the amino acid arginine. We'll do that tomorrow on the bright side. Okay, got a couple lines open for you. Love to hear from you. Now's the time to get on board so we don't have to rush through our calls. 855-660-4261 is our number. If you have questions about skin health, nutrition, the longevity products, if you have a comment or a success story, 855-660-4261 is our number. Let's go to... Uh, Virginia, and welcome Cindy to the Bright Side. Good morning, Cindy. How you doing? Um, not bad. I enjoyed your show last night. It was the first time I've listened to you. Oh, okay, good. Uh, you okay. mean the ta- the uh, the talk? Yeah. The, the uh, weight Whatever loss you're thing. Gonna, the weight loss thing. Yes. Um, did I go I too fast? I, th- I thought I was going really fast. I didn't want to. I didn't want to pound you with too much information, but I think I did. Was it too much um, information? Maybe a little bit. Not for me personally, but I have a very difficult time writing, <laughs> not hearing, <laughs> but okay. writing. Um, I'm, I'm calling for a couple of things okay. about my diet. I'm a type oh. one diabetic for okay. 48 years, and I've had a hysterectomy. Oh, okay. Now, now well, I am some... going through something you need to know about. I think you'll understand it better than my doctors do. Okay. I am going through psychotropic drug withdrawal. Okay. What I do you want? My, um, I am physically. They tell me off of all the meds. I came off of Suboxone, Seroquel, Elevil, oh my goodness. and Clonazepam. You were on all these at the same time? Yes. I oh, my life. goodness. Were you in a hospital? Were you hospitalized at all? For the first five days, I went around for about six to eight months having low blood pressure, not knowing why. And I went to the ER, and normally they take four to six hours before they come back. And within three hours, I had internal medicine and psychiatry down there. I was damaging my heart. You were on some serious medication. You know, I, I don't know if you know, you probably don't know this, but when I graduated pharmacy school, I worked in a psychiatric institute as a pharmacist, and I was just mm-hmm. absolutely blown away by how little the doctors knew about drugs, how little anybody knew about drugs, and how they were just throwing patients on this drug and that drug and taking a little of this off and putting a little more there and mix, make, creating these cocktails to try to, 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 try to heal people's mental health issues. And let me tell you something. Antipsychotic drugs are among the most evil, twisted medications that you could ever imagine because they mess with your head in addition to messing with your body. All drugs are going to mess with your body, but uh, antipsychotic drugs, psychotropic medicines specifically target your brain, and that is messed up in my opinion. Now, here's the deal. You've heard, uh, you've, you probably heard us talking earlier about the relationship between brain health and the digestive system. This is something that's oftentimes, most of the time, missed by psychiatrists and brain uh, so-called uh, psychologists and, and uh, physicians who supposedly work on on emotional and mental health issues, so you got to do it yourself. Focus on digestive health issues. Now, without a hysterectomy, you, or I'm sorry, without a uterus, after a hysterectomy, you're going to have a little bit, it's going to be a little bit trickier, trickier because after you've had your female organs removed, we typically don't process fats as well, and that can be a big problem for mental health issues as well as for, as well as for the gut, uh, for gut bacteria, and it can really wreak havoc on a lot of systems in the body. So, number one, here's what you're going to want to do. Uh, if you have digestive problems, which I'm sure you do, link oh, yeah. those up. Link those up to problem. Are you constipated? Uh, yeah, to the point uh, they did um, two colonoscopy preps, okay. loculose. They had me on Mirlex and Bisacodyl, and I've been on those for years. And okay. My bowels messed up. Yes, it is, and I understand. <laughs> I can understand, and that's what happens. See, think about it this way, Cindy. When you're not eliminating out of your, you're not eliminating out, uh, having bowel movements, right? You're not eliminating toxins no, out of the body. Not at all. Mm-hmm. They build up in the body. They build up in the intestine. All of these toxins, all of these bacteria, build up in the intestine, and they start to spew their poisons into the blood. That's where you start to get into the mental health issues. So having regular bowel movements is extremely important. So that's going to be the first step for you. Get on the Biolumin Nightly Essence right away. I do it today as soon as you hang up the phone. Order. Get on my website, brightsideben.com. Can you, can you spell that for me? Sure. It's the, the name of the company is Biolumin. It's a longevity product, but the company that makes it is called Biolumin, B-I-O-L-U-M-I-N. And the uh, name of the product is Nightly Essence. Take three in the morning and three at night. Go get a book called The, Joy, uh, the Art of Fermenting or maybe the art of fermentation, one or the other, and then start reading it and uh, make your own fermented foods. A sauerkraut, miso, fermented beets, fermented pickles, anything you could do. It's very easy to do. You just basically chop up vegetables and put some bacteria in there and let the stuff sit. And that should be your main source of, uh, of nutrition, at least for a while. Try to eat less food and even go into fasting a little bit, and you'll notice you're feeling better when you start to fast. And absolutely, positively, at, uh, where you're at in the state of your, where, where you're at in terms of your health, you have to have zero tolerance for any kind of processed sugars and processed foods. Any. 
you know, most people, they can kind of wean themselves off. You don't have that option at this point, ma'am. If you're 48 years old and you're already yeah. starting to break down like this, you have, mm-hmm. you're, you have to have zero tolerance for anything that comes in a box or anything that's, that's mushy and, and, and kind of melts in your mouth sort of food. You got to stay away from all of that kind of stuff. And, and basically, you want to stay away from any foods you don't absolutely need. But sugary foods are going to really wreak havoc on your digestive system. Steer yourself into more protein. Since you're a new listener, I'll just, you know, most of our listeners hear me say this all the time, but I'll tell you, because you're new, you want to, the way you get off of, of sugars is you steer yourself into protein and good fat. Use coconut oil as a good fat or butter as a good fat, and then mix your butter and coconut oil and salt with uh, either fish protein, egg protein, whey protein is also good. Make a smoothie every morning with whey protein, coconut oil, and then uh, and use your, you can put some Beyond Tangy Tangerine in there. And speaking of the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, get on the Healthy Start Pack. Here's the thing, Cindy. What I just gave you is step number one. I know I gave you a lot of stuff, and there's a lot more, but that's just step number one, and you really want to focus on this idea of taking steps. You know, I always, I always think of my kitchen when I think of uh, how, how the healing process be, how the healing process should, uh, should take place. I always think of my dirty, filthy kitchen after I cook. I hate looking at my kitchen and my, uh, and my sink and the dishes piling up. You know what I'm saying, Cindy? You look at the, you look at the mess in the sink and you go, what the heck am I going to do? So, can you relate to that, Cindy? Yes, I can. Okay, well, hang tight, because I'm going to tell you how, you how you approach the body in that regard, in the same way that you clean your dirty kitchen. Hang tight, Cindy. And then if you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 855-660-4261 is our number. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side, talking to Cindy in Virginia. Cindy, are you yes. there, ma'am? Yes, I am. Okay, so I was giving you my little kitchen analogy. Okay. Um, I'm not much of a cook, or, but I, I do every once in a while. I'll motivate. And, and then I look at the kitchen and my counter and the sink and the dishes and the, and the silverware, and it's just overwhelming, and I feel like just leaving it there. But I don't. What I do is I take one dish, one fork, one spoon, and I wash it, and I put it away, or I just rinse it. I put it in the dishwasher one spoon at a time, one cup at a time, one plate at a time. And this is how we have to look at the bottom. When it's breaking down, if we try to try to approach every single organ in the body, we're going to go nuts. We're going to we're going to try. If you try to uh, approach the brain and the skin and the liver and the female organs and and the bones and the muscles and all the different parts of the body, you're just going to throw your hands up and go to the doctor and say, "Just do it. Just poison me. Cut me. Take get rid, right." You know that sense of frustration. Yeah. I, yeah you so, so you got to do one spoon at a time. Okay, that means first the digestive system. One spoon, focus on digestive health. One spoon, go get a notebook and write down everything you eat. Every morsel that goes into your mouth, put it on the piece of paper. Uh, you divide your piece of paper up into several columns. The first column will have the foods you eat, chicken or, or bread or cereal or peanut butter, whatever it is, and try to eat you as simply as... You want a food as- diary, right? Exactly. Yeah, I have migraines too and I've done a food diary. You okay. want everything I drink or eat, right? I don't want anything. Want, this is you. you it, it's for me. <laughs> You're you. you want me to yes. write down for me the time for that you. I do it? You got it. You know what to do then. But eat yeah, simply. It's much easier if you eat simply because if you have a, a food that has a lot of working parts, you're not going to know what causes what. And then every two hours, every four hours, every six hours, how you feel. And you're going to start to notice trends. And then those are foods you need to eliminate. That's a spoon. That's a fork. That's one piece okay. of one, one uh, a piece of dishware, one, one dish. Then okay. the bioluminite nightly essence and fermented foods. That's your second dish. Then... The Healthy Start Pack, sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. That's your third dish. And for now, you got three dishes, okay? Later on, okay. we're going to get... Later on, we're going to get you into more protein. We'll get you into coconut oil. We'll get you into zinc and vitamin A and focusing on fats. But for now, we just got one dish. And we're going to, you'll, you'll notice that you're starting to improve. This is where you really, where the success in your health reversal program really kicks in is when you start to notice improvement. And for you guys who are moving the longevity products, who are trying to spread the word about longevity, this is how you want your clients to appreciate health. You want them to see results for themselves. You want to be trending in a certain direction. Does that make sense, Cindy? You want to be trending. Yes, you're not going to be completely healed in one day or one week, but you're going to be trending, uh, trending upwards, and you're going to be noticing that you're that you're feeling better. So you got you got some action steps there. I'd love it if you stay in touch with me either by phone or by email, and I'll, I'm glad to be your coach and walk you through this whole process. Okay, okay Cindy. Um, your email address. Ben B E N at ksco dot com. Make sure you put in there Cindy from Virginia because I get tons of emails, and I okay. want to make sure I get to you. Okay. All right. 
right. Thank you very much. Thank ben. you. God bless, Cindy. Good luck with everything. Okay, let's see. Uh, 855-660-4261 is our number. Welcome to the Bright Side, Walt. What's going on, buddy? <clears throat> Good morning, Ben. Uh, Good morning. I have two, two eye problems, uh, glaucoma okay. and uh, cataracts. Glaucoma is okay. my biggest problem. They're very similar. They're very, very similar, believe it or not. Uh, how old are you, Walt? 83. 83? Yes. Awesome. And and that's all that's your only health issues? Uh uh, hypothyroidism. Okay, well, they're all connected. Here's the deal. Glaucoma is uh, is caused by uh, cells and inflammation that are affecting the way fluid is drained from the eye. You've got these little valves uh, that open and close, and when those valves get clogged up, fluid starts to build up. Cataracts is ca- are caused by a, a breakdown or a problem with the way cells are growing on the lens of the eye. So basically what you got is inflammation and cells not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And it's, in the valves, it causes glaucoma. On the lens, it causes... Uh, cataracts, but it's basically cells that aren't growing correctly, secondary to inflammation and probably sugar. So what you got to do, Walt, as with uh, our last caller, Cindy, and everybody else who calls the bright side, is we got to figure out, number one, why these, why this inflammation is starting to build up and why cells aren't dividing like they should be. And that usually means some kind of digestive system breakdown, especially as it regards fats. Uh, because fats are the hardest, uh, they're harder to process and they're harder for the body to utilize than, than water soluble nutrients. So look to fatty nutrients and look to uh, fatty sub, uh, fatty uh, phytonutrients, nutrients that are in vegetables. Those are your two main ways to treat glaucoma and cataracts, but there's a couple other things. I'll give you those in a minute. Look for vitamin A. Uh, uh, carotenes and flavonoids, these are nutrients that are found in vegetables and in fruits. Make sure you're mixing your vegetables and your fruits with some kind of oil, and it wouldn't, wouldn't hurt to heat them up just a little bit, either through steam or a little bit of roasting. Make uh, carrots and beets and a pumpkin. Anything red and orange is going to be especially helpful for the eye, but all vegetables will be. Uh, if you're going to do fruits, you want to try to do fruits that have lots of peel, since the, the good stuff is in the peel and not as much pulp. That's where all the sugar is. And then mix it up with butter, mix it up with oil, mix it up with coconut oil, and then, as I say, slightly heat or maybe crush up your fruits and vegetables to release these phytonutrients. And then the second thing is going to be the fatty nutrients, especially fatty vitamins, vitamin A, 20,000 international units a day is especially important for the eyes. Vitamin E can be helpful for the eyes, 400 international units a day. And then there's great minerals for the eyes, selenium, the ultimate selenium is very important for eye health, uh, 200 to 400 micrograms of selenium. And zinc is also important for eye health, 50 milligrams, 50, uh, milligrams of zinc picolinate is probably where you want to be. The next step is to work on blood sugar issues. Once your blood sugar gets thrown off and pieces of sugar float around in the blood, unprocessed sugar or, or, or uh, a defective sugar, if you will, glycated sugar, they call it, or glycated proteins, I should say. That's uh, sugared proteins, caramelized proteins. That can affect uh, the lens of the eye, can also affect the valve. So making sure you're processing sugar correctly is the second thing for glaucoma and cataracts. You want to get on the Sweeties as soon as possible. If you're not on the Sweeties, do two or three after all your meals. Of course, the Healthy Start Pack, that's a, that's a must-have. Uh, I would throw in the mul- the uh, uh, the ultimate, uh, sorry, the Biolumin Nightly Essence, the fermented foods to make sure that you're processing your foods correctly, and then also the ultimate enzymes after all your meals. There's a couple other nutrients that can be helpful for, for blood sugar. We've been talking about arginine now for a couple of weeks. Arginine is an amino acid that can be helpful for blood sugar, maybe a gram or two a day. At the age of 80, you probably have some, uh, you probably could use some ar- some of arginine's building benefits as well. So a gram or two of arginine can have multiple m- multiple functions. Uh, improve multiple functions in your body. The amino acid taurine is also very important for the eyes and very important for sugar control. It's also good for brain health. It has a nice relaxing effect. It's been used to treat seizure disorders. And taurine is difficult to find from food, so you're going to want to supplement with that maybe 100 to 200 milligrams a day. Don't forget about plain old, good old vitamin C, the primal panacea, very, very important for eye health. You might want to think about liquid vitamin C. You're going to get some in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, around 1,000 milligrams per two scoops, but it wouldn't hurt you to go get yourself some extra vitamin C and maybe do a quarter teaspoon or so in water. Oh, once or twice a day, and that'll help you in that regard. Of course, staying away from anything that spikes your blood sugar is absolutely, uh, absolute must, must, must have strategy for any eye health issues. Diabetes and eye problems go hand in hand. So treating yourself as a pre-diabetic or diabetic in terms of your food choices is also going to be important. And as I was saying to Cindy, and I've said so many times before, don't 
try to use willpower to steer yourself away from bread and pasta and sweets and cereal and fruit juice, etc. Eat more protein, whey protein and egg protein especially, but pretty much all foods are going to get you a little bit of protein. Whey and egg have dense concentrated protein. Fish protein can also help. And then mix your protein up with coconut oil or with some kind of fat, and that will help, help steer you away from those uh, blood sugar or insulin spiking foods that can wreak havoc on eye health. So you got tons of stuff there, Walt. Uh, even if you do just a fraction of that, you should notice some, some serious differences. Uh, last but not least, and this is always the case with any kind of degenerative disease, Diseases, relax the body. Remember, you got a, a relaxation nervous system and you have a stress nervous system. When the body's stress nervous system is activated, you will not find it, the body will not be able to heal, the body will not be able to repair, the body will not be able to recover. So activating the, the relaxation nervous system, it's called the parasympathetic nervous system, is very, very important. That means using deep breathing techniques, slow, deep breathing, telling the body that all is safe and it's okay for it to repair, making sure you're getting your micronutrients, your mighty 90 nutrients. That's another important strategy for activating the parasympathetic nervous system. And of course, psychological and emotional strategies are very important for all healing. We don't talk about this anywhere nearly enough, in my opinion, in the world of health or even on this program on the bright side. But please understand, you guys, there's a spiritual dimension to health. There's a mental dimension to health. There's an emotional dimension to health that are so important. They even trump the physical dimension, even though we don't address them anywhere near as much as we should. So being spiritually connected, feeling like you're part of God's plan, using mental strategies, good thoughts, kind thoughts, peaceful thoughts, using emotional strategies, love and, and joy and rapture and forgiveness. These are all so important when it comes to healing the body from a physical perspective. And of course, making sure you're on those Mighty 90 Nutrients, the Healthy Start Pack. We make it so easy for you to do all that at Longevity. Thank you so much for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about autism and arginine. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.